that's the signal to YouTube to send me something saying, hey, I'm Curtis and I watch, you know, uh, I don't know, basic white girls uh, lip sync to rap videos in Lululemon. Oh yeah, what's up guys? This is Curtis Pike. My friends call me Big C. I'm back in action today. I'm back using the heartbeat tool and I want to talk to you about a new Brian Johnson video that just came out and he addresses why the YouTube algorithm isn't or may not be suggesting your content in 2024. If you want to follow along with me, it's h.ki and I apologize if my voice is cracky. I'm still a little sick here and I lost my voice, but it's coming back slowly but surely. But uh, here we go. I'm on heartbeat. I'll just click on my heartbeat. Then I click on moments. And now I'm going to go out down here and you'll see here, why won't YouTube recommend my video? So we're going to start this one off here. Let's click in and let's get going. I'm going to turn the volume up and here we go. All right, here we go. So we're going to check out Brian Johnson's video. It's quite a long video, but I've selected a bunch of moments that I think are the best moments, especially for uh, smaller YouTube channels and newer users. So it starts off quickly here with why won't YouTube recommend my videos? First few seconds of this video, very interesting. Let's go. Why won't the YouTube algorithm recommend my videos? If you're lucky enough to get views within the first few days, hundreds of views, maybe even thousands of views, statistically speaking, those views probably died several days after publishing. Yeah. This is what I like to refer to as the YouTube flatline. We've all been here. We all know how this is. Whether you're a large channel and you upload a video and then it just gets, stops getting views, or you're a small channel and you get 10 views and then in the first few days and then on day three it gets zero views or one view. We've all been here. Uh, there are ways to combat that which will be discussed in this video in terms of topics and keyword phrases and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's definitely worth noting that I think we've all been in this situation. I'm in it right now. So let's skip forward now to three minutes and six seconds. And he talks about the recommendation engine browse and suggested videos. Here's why when we talk about the recommendation engine, we're really talking about two algorithms, browse and suggested. Right. So this is the recommendation engine. This is separate from keyword. Or this is separate, pardon me, from search terms. So whether it's YouTube search or external search through websites like Google, these are, this is totally different. It's worth it to keep that in the back of your head. And both really pay attention to the viewers. So think about this. When you upload a video, the algorithm doesn't push your video out to a huge group of viewers. Instead, it waits for a viewer to uh, log in. Imagine I'm just logging in. I, I click on YouTube. The algorithm right then is going to say, okay, we've got a viewer. What kind of video do we think that viewer is going to love and watch and really engage with? Right, so this is a very, very, very important part point in my opinion. Uh, traditionally, years ago, YouTube would put uh, you know popular videos on the home page, and then it would promote them, and it would you know it would try to push popular content out, with either you know having a top of the front page of YouTube or whatever. But it's it's gone far past that now. Machine learning and all that is kicking in now. Instead of pushing it, it's pulling it. So when I log in. That's the signal to YouTube to send me something saying, hey, I'm Curtis and I watch, you know, uh, I don't know, basic white girls uh, lip sync to rap videos in Lululemon's. Like, that's uh, pretty specific. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Maybe that's my thing. I don't know. Hey, look, it's weird, but I, at least I'm honest, right, guys? But maybe it knows that's what I'm into for some reason. I like basic girls doing basic things. And it's going to pull, I'm going to pull those videos in. It's not going to push them to me. It's pulling them based on my very weird preferences okay i gotta get going here Let, that's too much info all right let's go so the algorithm pulls videos for the individual viewer it doesn't take your video and push it out to a huge group of viewers in fact check this out this statement comes from youtube it's based on a white paper they wrote years ago about the recommendation engine and it's based on user history so it right so you know, when your parents always tell you, remember to delete your history? Oh, wait, that was just my dad. Yeah, never mind. It says, as an example, consider the user's past history with the channel that uploaded the video being scored. So when that viewer comes onto YouTube and they're looking, the first thing the algorithm does is what channels is this viewer watching right now? And that's going to pull videos 
And I want you to think about this algorithm, the recommendation engine, as having two big buckets. Right, so there you heard it there. And the two buckets are browse and suggested. Now the next part here doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my opinion. So I'm going to skip forward here and then I'm going to go right here to how many videos have they watched on your channel? Something else you may want to think about. And furthermore, YouTube says this, how many videos has the user watched from this channel? So the more they come back to your channel, the more likely the algorithm will recommend your next video. But right. So sometimes some creators, for example, will do one topic, like let's say it's League of Legends and they make great League of Legends videos, but it's all about League of Legends. And people are always coming back to see the latest build or the latest whatever. Those types of guys and gals often get more views than guys like me, for example, on my other channel. I make content about all sorts of different things like video editing, you know, Photoshop, all these other things, uh, AI. They don't always come back as much. So sometimes, you know, the number of videos they watch on your channel is very, very important. So, yeah, just keep that in the back of your head. Here he talks about new channels and topics but that brings us to this next statement which makes it possible for any channel size even a channel that's just getting started no views no subscribers here's how to win when Ooh. was the last time the user watched a video on this topic right so keep this in the back of your head as well there's there's the individual channel and then there's the individual topic and a topic is different a topic is could be done by anybody like I could make a video about the YouTube algorithm your friend could make one and his friend and his friend that's the topic it's not the channel these are often well you'll see pick you see we've got one bucket remember the algorithm is gonna pull videos from one bucket based on videos and channels the viewer yeah. watches and then they're gonna pull videos based on topics so they could pull from the channel bucket. So I got a favorite channel. I watch all his videos. I'm going to get info from there. But I also watch a certain topic. And that topic, again, could be, you know, basic women doing lip syncing to hardcore rap videos and, in you know, strange designer Lululemon athletic wear. Like it could be something like that. That video, those types of videos could be pulled into my stream from multiple channels, not just, you know, basic girl.tv for example if you're struggling the more you can honor topics and keyword phrases the more likely you can grow now i just got this comment the there you go so if you're a small channel you're not going to win the i've got a big channel and people watch all my videos uh game because you don't or at least it's it's a small part of your business but you can compete on the topic thing or what he calls keyword phrases and how to target them. Let's skip forward and see what his suggestions are around that uh, there. So Tony, if you want to grow, think about keyword phrases. So what I like to do is I just think of keyword phrases as topics. For example, if you search for a YouTube algorithm, that's a topic and it's also a keyword phrase. And I'm also ranking number one or number two. Maybe you'll see number three. It's based on a number of factors. But when I look at an account, a browser where I'm signed out of YouTube, I know. So this is a second reason why you, you can use an incognito browser. Is So if you load up uh, uh, a Google Chrome in on incognito mode, there's multiple reasons to do that, None, some of which I won't discuss. This one is one that I will discuss, and it's great for figuring out where you rank without you being logged in to an account. So it'll sometimes give you better re results if you're logged in and you're trying to see where you uh, rank. So keep that in the back of your head. Notice that I'm number one for multiple keyword phrases, and you really can't argue with the results that I'm showing you here. And what do you think happens as you target more specific topics? YouTube is going to see that you've got a bigger audience. More people are watching because targeting keyword phrases based on really specific topics makes it easier to compete against the channels that are currently kicking your butt. And, and this is a hundred percent true. And I could tell you, even from my own personal experience on my personal channel, 
I've got like almost 40,000 subscribers and I was inactive for years as well. But uh, you know what? I, I sort of kicked it up and I attack topics. It works. All right, so let's get forward to when you publish, some things to think about when you publish your videos. And so let's talk about exactly what's going to happen when you publish your next video. First thing YouTube's going to do is it's going to try to determine the perfect audience, the people that are going to love the video that you publish. And it's going to serve your video to them again when they come on YouTube, whether they're watching on a... So keep that in the back of your head. When they come online, it, it's going to serve it to them. So it's not so much a push. It's when they come in, that's when they're going to get it. So it's a pull more than a push, although, again, it's a little bit of semantics. Let's skip forward to day two. So how day one is all about the pulling process. Day two is more about, you know, YouTube measuring and seeing how well the video is done and then deciding whether what to do with it from there. And then what YouTube is going to do is after a day, they're going to measure the performance of your video. YouTube is going to look at how long did the viewers watch? Did they subscribe? A lot of talk about subscribers don't matter. I understand why that's a discussion, but the fact of the matter is 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. When someone subscribes, it sends a powerful signal. That's right. And all of this is coming down to signals. If someone likes your video, comments on your video, or a positive comment, because they can measure sentiment quite easily now, especially with all the large language models and all that stuff out there. Did they subscribe? These are all signals. YouTube, Google, they're looking for signals. Subscribing to your channel is a big signal. ...to YouTube, that viewers enjoy your videos. And YouTube is going to be more likely to send your video out on day two. And this mm -hmm. is exactly what happens. The performance of your video determines how it does on the second day. Right, so day one is important. Day two, if you pass day one <laughs> and you get some good metrics and you get some good signals, it goes out into the wild. And here he discusses day two and even day three. Let's take a quick look at that. If it's good enough, YouTube will push it out. Interesting, now on day two of a video release, often what will happen is a lot less of my regular viewers will see the video, but YouTube pushes it out. This is... I'm excited about day one, but day two is where it's at. He's not wrong here. This is right. Day two is the make or break it because if the video is good, independent of what your individual uh, subscribers or viewers, you know, people that come to your channel regularly, if it's objectively good and it's got objectively good metrics, it'll share it with the world. And that's where the big, big view counts can come from because that is when my video enters what I like to call nightmare mode. Yeah, this is that. where your video is pushed primarily to non-subscribers. Now, still you're gonna see subscribers watching, but again, it's mostly new viewers to your channel. And you have a chance to make a great first impression. If your video does good again, then guess what? You make yeah. it to day three and YouTube continues to push out your video to more and more viewers there it is so that is generally how it works guys it's the the first initial burst is important but each step of the way is important and as you move further down the i guess down the tunnel the better your video is if you get past it it could be shared and that is probably how viral videos are uh, selected you know a video has just hit all these click-through rates and, and, and watch times and all that crazy stuff, uh, watch through percentages, etc. It could go potentially viral or it can go into the uh, search results where people are looking for things and YouTube will serve your video up. That's where I personally make a lot of my views and a lot of my money is off that. And uh, yeah, it just works. So there you go, guys. This is a great video. You can watch the whole thing. I hope you enjoyed the moments I've selected. I've got a ton more videos coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.